What up, you guys? It is Keisha. It is Talk Ish Monday, and I'm back with a new All to All shade. Um, we just got done watching Love and Hip Hop New York season five. We're on episode, I think, five. Um, I wasn't even gonna do a video at first because they really didn't give me that much material to make fun of. But after watching that whole thing between Saigon and Erica, I had to do a quick video because it just pissed me off and touched my heart in the worst way. Like that just really bothered me and it really disturbed me um i give tonight's episode of love and hip-hop a fucking f it was just the worst ever um so let's get into not my favorite moments but just a couple of moments that made me feel some type of way so we saw saigon take his uh child's mother erica jean to some old whack ass painting class that looked like it was from free at the YMCA or some shit like that and I'm like what kind of bullshit ass date is this like he couldn't take this bitch out to a five star restaurant at least a goddamn me uh dine in theater movie or some shit like he literally took her to a fucking pottery born class that was free that you find in a fucking classified section of the newspaper and shit the Sunday newspaper I'm like what kind of shit is this and his big head ass sitting up there telling her that he's so happy to see her and he love her and he trying to he want to make this shit work he gonna find his way into her heart and her dumb ass just sitting there eating the shit up like dumb hoes do like we all do and I just looking at this dumb ass nigga like this ain't nothing but the butter up for his nigga to go fucking crazy on her ass which we saw in the next fucking scene and so the next time we see them, we see Saigon at some fucked up ass restaurant telling this girl that he thinks there's something wrong with their son because he's going on two and he's not really speaking as much as his other child who is a month apart from his son. Uh, she talks more than this little boy. And I'm like, first of all, motherfucker, just a week ago, you didn't even think that this boy was yours. You was accusing this girl of being a rat and that she was fucking everybody in the motherfucking hood in the tri-state fucking area. And you won the fucking fraternity test. Then the baby came out to be yours and you were so elated. Now you find another reason to make something be wrong with this girl. Now the baby is retarded. Now the baby got autism. Now the baby a fucking mute and a fucking... God damn me. What's them damn people that be on the street of uh, uh <laughs> doing this shit? <laughs> Whatever the people do, a mime. Now the baby's a fucking mime and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck, nigga? He is just trying to find anything to make this girl be wrong. He's mad at the decision that he made when he laid down to fuck this girl. So far, I make fun of the way she looks because she looks like a fucking gray cloud and shit, and like a fucking cloudy damn sky. But that girl has not done one thing that I have seen on this television show outside of being a dumbass bitch, which, which we have all have been in our lifetime, and loving a nigga that ain't worth shit, and trying to make something um, I, that ain't shit and ain't nothing be more than what the fuck it is. But he is just trying to make this girl look so fucking horrible. But that girl has not done anything thing to this boy on this show he has disrespected her on so many fucking occasions and then he sits there and tell her i know i'm not i'm not blaming him i'm blaming you i'm blaming the parent excuse because you don't spend as much time with him first of all nigga how the fuck you know what she do and her motherfucking household nigga and you don't even stay in the fucking household with them five seconds ago you didn't even think the fucking little boy was yours you are talking about this little boy being fucking retarded or slow or whatever to mentally challenged when you didn't think the little boy was yours everything was all good then now a week later now something wrong with the goddamn child like Saigon you are so fucking wrong it's not even funny you are the worst kind of nigga in life you are like the nigga I just fucking left you are the worst nigga and I pray to God somebody run over your ass with a fucking car cause you ain't shit my nigga so then he sits up there and goes off on this girl and she like really like where the fuck all this shit come from the other day you take me to the free pottery boy class my nigga telling me how much you love me and how much you want to be a family with me and how we gonna work this shit out and then next time I see you you tell me I'm a fucking unfit ass mother like who does this shit now I see what she was saying while she was when she was pregnant this nigga was terrorizing her that's why her fucking ass disappeared for fucking six months didn't want to have shit to do with his ass but bitch bitch you was wrong cause you should have stayed gone and never should have fucked with this old iPhone shaped ass head nigga I then this girl, of course, she's stunned by his accusations and she tries to 
take herself from the negative situation that she has been placed in and leave because she's on 10, which any mother would be. If you come to me telling me I'm a fucking unfit ass mama nigga when you ain't shit and ain't even really been there, been here for the fucking little boy. So this girl tries to leave. He tell her, nah, we talking about my son. Come back. This girl tries to get in her car. This nigga opens up her door, calling her a bitch, telling her her ass is fake, calling her a fucking hood rat, calling her a fucking hood booger, whatever the fuck that dumb ass shit is. Opens up this girl car door and she's like leave me the fuck alone and trying to close her door y'all I'm so motherfucking heated because I have been through this shit I have had a nigga treat me like I am not shit and terrorizing me and doing old ignorant mean disrespectful ass shit to me when I have not done anything to this nigga and so I felt her fucking pain in that motherfucking scene to have a nigga all up in your motherfucking face cussing you the fuck out and terrorizing you and antagonizing you when you trying to get the fuck away from this nigga and I'm like oh so now this bitch a hood rat she a hood booger, but she wasn't a hood rat and a hood booger when you was squirting off all up in her motherfucking pussy, nigga. She wasn't a motherfucking hood booger and a hood rat when your ass is out here fucking another bitch that's a month apart. They got a kid that's a month apart from the son that you got with her. You the whole ass rat ass motherfucking nigga. Like, I hate motherfucking niggas. Niggas ain't fucking shit. That's why I don't fuck with niggas. I fuck with African American black ass men, not these old whack ass niggas out here. I can't stand niggas. But anyway, so then this girl gets out of her car because this nigga antagonizing her. She trying to fucking walk away. He all up in her motherfucking face calling her bitches and shit. This bitch, of course, what would you do if a nigga all up in your motherfucking face while you trying to get away from this nigga? She hit him with her motherfucking purse. This nigga then takes it to a whole nother motherfucking level, takes the motherfucking purse and throws her motherfucking purse like a motherfucking shot put like he in a motherfucking Olympics and shit across the motherfucking parking lot. I don't... That shit... Pissed me off. I didn't even like the fact that they showed that shit. But I'm happy they did show it because it showed what kind of a bitch ass, soft ass nigga Saigon is. But that shit was abusive. It was immensely abusive. He ain't shit. Any bitch in America that fuck with that old Mack truck, dump truck, looking ass nigga Bob the Builder looking ass motherfucker need to be slapped. Because you's a dumb bitch if you ever fuck with that nigga. He is the worst kind of nigga ever. And Erica Jean, if you ever fuck with this nigga again, bitch, I'm going to kick you in the face with a motherfucking steel toe boot. You dumb ass bitch if you ever fuck with him again. Because that nigga is the worst kind of disrespectful ass nigga that will ever fucking grace the fucking planet. He's one of these niggas that will motherfucking click on your ass in a motherfucking minute. He will fuck up your shit. He will call you every kind of bitch and hoe, rat, cunt ass bitch in the world fuck in the motherfucking world and then turn around and want to eat your motherfucking pussy and be like bitch i'm sorry i'm telling you i've lived that shit i lived that shit for fucking five and a half years dealing with a motherfucker that tried to make me be less than what the fuck i am try to steal my motherfucking joy try to steal my motherfucking shine because this nigga one shit girl bye don't let no nigga treat you bad or poorly girls you are worth more you are worth the sun you are worth the sky you are a god's gift to the fucking earth and the planet and if you don't believe that these niggas out here won't fucking believe it so believe that you are worth more that's why we do ask Keisha Mo to try to show y'all women that there is more to life than being with ain't shit ass niggas because there are good men out there and I know for a fact that there are fucking good men out there because as soon as I left that nigga and opened myself up and realized what a fucking prize I was now God has blessed me with somebody that has shown me how it really feels to be treated like a motherfucking queen by a nigga. I'm telling y'all, don't fall for the fucking okie doke. And then last but not least, we saw Yandy talking to her, uh, to Mandisi's, um, lawyer about when is he gonna get a bail hearing and why this man won't communicate with her. He like, I can't communicate with you because you basically not married to him. And anything Mandisi wants you to know, he got to tell you himself because of confidentiality agreement they have together. And she's sitting up there looking like, where's fucking Waldo? Like, she don't fucking understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah, he get that shit the fuck up. This nigga's gone. He was out here selling fucking heroin, bitch. Stop trying to act like... It was just some hearsay shit, and this nigga got locked up for nothing. It's obvious that he's hiding shit from you. That's why he's not telling your ass fucking everything, bitch. The nigga is gone. You a single-ass mama. Leave that nigga alone. Tell him, nigga, I'll see your ass in 20 
fucking 25, my nigga, or a fucking 20, 30, and keep it fucking pushing and move on with your life and find you somebody else, or bitch, find your damn self. Ain't no way in hell I'm gonna be sticking with a nigga that's in fucking jail. As soon as the goddamn doors go clink, nigga, I'm shotting you up the deuce. I'm not fucking with your ass. I'm not accepting no motherfucking collect calls. You ain't gonna be running up my motherfucking sprint bill, my nigga. You ain't gonna be running up my charter bill, call me on my house phone, motherfucker. I'm not doing that shit. I'm not catching no motherfucking bus, a plane, a train, an automobile, a skateboard, some roller skates, a goddamn me, motorcycle to come see your ass. I'm not motherfucking doing it. I'm gonna have my pretty ass in a motherfucking club. Dark dropping and thump the thun and not thinking about your motherfucking ass. Girls, don't be sitting up here wasting your life away with a nigga that's in jail that can't even see the fucking sun. That can't even feel the rain on his motherfucking skin, my nigga. That can't even eat a motherfucking Twinkie or a Hot Pocket, my motherfucking nigga. That can't watch Boardwalk Empires on Sunday nights with you. That can't watch Dancing with the Stars, my nigga. That can't rub your back and rub your feet and fart in the middle of the night while y'all in the bed sleeping. Can't snow in your ear. Girl, don't waste your motherfucking time dealing with these old whack ass incarcerated ass niggas girl whoo